Hi, I'm Aaron Rutten, and welcome to this digital art tutorial where we'll unleash the power of brush jitter. Discover how to break free from rigid, uniform strokes and infuse your brushes with a sense of organic character and behavior. Brush jitter happens when artists drink too much coffee. No, wait, that's not right. Do over. In digital art, jitter refers to brush properties that can add randomness to other properties. This can affect various aspects of the stroke, such as its size, opacity, angle, color, or texture, creating a more natural and organic look compared to perfectly uniform strokes. Even with a ruler, a traditional pencil line is not perfectly straight. There are microscopic imperfections. With traditional media, there is always some variation, and no two lines or strokes are exactly the same. If you want your digital art to appear less mechanical and more dynamic, then jitter properties are what you need. In addition to using jitter to emulate the look of natural media, you can also create unnatural effects as well. Many of the default brushes in your art application may already have several jitter properties applied to them. But if you're creating your own brushes, then it is crucial to learn how jitter works. It's important to disambiguate intentional brush jitter from a jittery hand. In that case, you might be trying to eliminate jitter from your lines, which requires a different tutorial. I'll link you to that in the description of this video. To access the jitter settings, you'll want to locate your advanced brush properties. In many applications, this is found in a brush creator panel. Usually there is a button for this in the properties bar near the top of the interface, but sometimes you may need to access it from a separate properties panel. For example, here in Photoshop, I can open the brush settings, and under shape dynamics, I can see jitter for size, angle, and more. And if I look under transfer, there is an opacity jitter property. In Rebel, if you look in the brush creator, jitter can be found under stroke, shape and grain, and textures. Your art application might have randomness properties that aren't necessarily referred to as jitter, but can randomize properties in the same way. For example, in Krita, you can utilize the fuzzy dab and fuzzy stroke properties to randomize their adjacent properties. And in Clip Studio Paint, you'll look in the Tool Property panel and click this small button to the right of a property to access the Brush Dynamics Random property. First, let's try adding some jitter to the size of a brush. In Photoshop, I will create a new layer to paint on and choose a basic hard edge brush at a size of 15. Next, I'll draw a vertical straight line by holding Shift. Since there is no size jitter, the edges of the line are perfectly straight. After that, I'll gradually drag the size jitter slider to the right to add jitter. Each time you release the slider, keep an eye on the stroke preview because it will show the effects of most properties in real time. You can see the line gets gradually more lumpy. If I use the bracket keys to increase and decrease the brush size, you can see how each dab in the stroke is a different size. Essentially, jitter is randomly changing the value of the size slider along the length of each stroke. The degree of size variation is defined by the strength of the jitter slider. So a low size jitter won't vary the dab size much at all, whereas a high value will create a more drastic difference in dab sizes. You can see this if I paint comparison strokes at the same brush size of 15. Now the brush looks more or less jagged instead of perfectly smooth. In addition to not looking very natural, perfectly smooth lines also tend to show more aliasing where the edges of lines can sometimes look blocky or pixelated. Adding some jitter to the line can help break up the edge. If I make my brush very thin, let's say two pixels wide, then that size variation makes the line look textured. It looks more like a pencil now than an ink pen. Size jitter works the same way in Rebel, as you can see here. Same goes for most art applications. The property has a different name in Clip Studio Paint, but it does the same thing. I'll return to Photoshop, press Ctrl A to select all, and press Delete to clear the canvas. I'll make my brush 40 pixels wide, then I'll use Shift to make a straight stroke with 100% size jitter. Your art application might allow you to smooth out the jitter along the stroke. In Photoshop, I can add some of the minimum diameter property. This increases the size of the smallest dabs, making the stroke less jagged. If pen pressure is enabled, the minimum diameter property also increases the minimum brush size when using pressure to control the line width. 
But that is a separate topic you can learn about in my course that teaches the essential skills of digital art, which I will link you to in the description of this video. That course goes more in depth into many of the properties I am covering in this tutorial. Let's jump over to Rebel and look at Scatter, which is another property that can add variation to the width of your lines. This property randomizes the alignment of the dabs to the stroke. I'll add 100% size jitter to this basic hard edge brush and hold shift to draw a straight line. With no scatter, the size of each dab varies, but all of the dabs are aligned to the center of the stroke. As I add scatter, you can see in the stroke preview how some of the dabs begin to stray away from the center. If I paint some straight lines with varying degrees of scatter, you can see how it makes the stroke look more or less lumpy. Very high values will give you a spray brush. I will continue demonstrating in Rebel. I'll reset this brush and clear my canvas with Delete. Then I will look under the Stroke Properties for Opacity Jitter. Because pen pressure affects opacity in Rebel, I want to reduce the pen pressure slider to negative 90. I'll be drawing with the mouse, so I want to ensure that the opacity doesn't build up to 100%. You might not need to do this in other art applications. If I make some mouse strokes with varying opacity jitter, you can see how the stroke changes. The opacity of each dab is being randomized along the stroke, creating a pattern. If I use the mouse to click and make a line of dabs, you can see the opacity variation more clearly. Sometimes the dabs are faint, and sometimes they are more opaque. If I add a medium amount of scatter to the brush, you can see it creates a cloudy or smoky effect. This would of course look better with a softer dab. I'll reset this brush, and let's have a look at the spacing property which can be found in many art applications. This controls the space between each dab and a stroke. I'll slowly increase the spacing until the dabs are separated from each other a bit when you paint a straight line with the mouse. If I add varying degrees of spacing jitter to the stroke, you can see the space between the dabs becomes randomized with some dabs overlapping and some far apart. If I add maximum spacing jitter and scatter and make my brush size smaller, I'll get a spray brush that is less constrained. I'll switch to the shape and grain properties in Rebel and demonstrate angle jitter next. For this you will need a dab that is flat like this one. If I paint a stroke with the mouse, you can see the edges are very flat. But as I add angle jitter, each dab begins to rotate until I get a lot of variation along the stroke edges. A practical use for this would be for painting with a highly detailed dab like a foliage brush. You will get more random leaf patterns if the angle of the dab is constantly randomizing. Without this angle jittering, the dabs may create repeating patterns which look unnatural. In Krita, changing the angle is not so straightforward. You'll need to add a rotation property, then set it to fuzzy dab. The strength slider controls how much angle variation is in the stroke. I'll return to Photoshop, and let's clear the brush controls for this basic hard edge brush. Next we will explore how roundness jitter can affect brushes. If I add 100% roundness jitter and use the mouse to paint a series of dabs, you can see how some dabs are round and some are flatter. If I paint a stroke, you can see it looks lumpy in a similar way to when I used size jitter. However, if I go to brush tip shape and increase the spacing, you can see the stroke looks much more uneven. This doesn't look natural, but it might work well for making abstract art. And again, you can play with the minimum setting to create more or less variation in the roundness of the dabs. Let's try adding jitter to the grain or texture of a brush. In Clip Studio Paint, I'll select the dry gouache brush, which already has some texture applied. If I click on the icon to the right of texture density, I can enable random, and then use the mouse to paint a series of large dabs. As you might expect, each dab has more or less texture in it. You can adjust the minimum slider to narrow the range of texture variation. Another way to jitter the texture of a brush is to randomize the position or angle of each brush dab as it builds up. I'll do this in Rebel with a large flat dry brush found in the pastels category. I will disable random start offset, and if I use the mouse to click several times in the same place, you can see how the texture is very static without any randomization. Whereas when I do add randomization, the pattern builds up more organically. You may want one effect or the other, so it's helpful to be aware of these options. 
There are a variety of methods to randomize the grain, but that's something you can explore in my courses for Rebel, Krita, or Corel Painter. Have a look at one of those if you're interested in learning more about how these specific properties work. Next, we will explore how to jitter the color of a brush. In Krita, I'll select a basic hard edge brush and look in the brush settings under color. I'll enable the hue property and then check fuzzy dab. I'll select a red color and paint a series of dabs with the mouse. You can see that each dab is a different color since the hue slider is being jittered or randomized. If I paint a stroke, I get a rainbow pattern. Lowering the strength creates less variation in hue so that the colors become more analogous. There is a more practical way to use color jitter, but we'll come back to that. It might go without saying, but you can combine many of these jitter and randomization properties together to create a lot of detail in your brushes. In Krita, I will add fuzzy dab to hue, size, rotation, and opacity, and add some scatter with a lower strength. Now I get a brush that sprays out multicolored dots. If I lower the strength of the hue variation and flatten the dab by reducing the ratio, now if I paint with a green color, I get something that looks like leaves. The leaves look more natural with the color variation compared to without. Adding color variability like this really gives life to your paint and can help it look less flat. If I gradually remove the jitter properties, then you can see how boring the brush looks. This emphasizes how essential these properties are for building effective brushes. Let's begin to wrap up this lesson by exploring a few more practical applications for using jitter. Here in Photoshop, I have some custom fur brushes that utilize jitter to create a natural looking fur pattern. Here's a grass brush with jitter that helps each grass blade stand out as they overlap each other. This smoke brush uses angle and color jitter plus scattering to make a cloudy effect. And here's a bristle brush that utilizes size and color jitter and scattering to make strokes that don't all look the same. If you're interested in any of my custom brushes for Photoshop, Rebel, Krita, or Corel Painter, I'll link you to them in the video description. To recap, adding jitter to your brushes is often necessary if you want to emulate the look and behavior of natural media, but it can also be useful for creating special effects as well. Without it, your brushes may look boring and repetitive. I highly encourage you to experiment with jitter and see what sort of brushes you can create. If you'd like more resources about brush creation, check out some of my paid courses and free tutorials. I'll link you to those in the description of this video. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.